Thank you everyone once again. Thank you to Dr. Sonia and to Natasha for arranging this uh, session. As mentioned, uh, <laughs> I just report for duty earlier this morning and then this is my first task. Uh, so I have not even you know, entered my office yet, so uh, I don't even know where my office is. <laughs> but it's glad to be back and to be sharing with all of you, uh, with uh, you know, <coughs> fellow friends as well. This faculty. So the topic, even to, uh, the initial topic, given to me was on how to help uh, FYP lecturers detect plagiarism. I think that was the first initial topic given to me. But I thought it was too narrow. And, um, maybe today we'll talk a little bit more about assessment with regards to the development that we, we are having at the moment uh, with AI and whatnot. So let's see whether you know uh, we can cover as many as we can. This is just on paper. I think the breakfast and lunch. Is it lunch? No. Breakfast, yes. You can feel free to take the breakfast. You don't have to wait until 10 uh, For lunch, you have to wait because the lunch is not here yet. <laughs> um, I have divided into two sessions. Session one is AI in assessment. Just to talk about a bit, just to talk a bit on capabilities and concerns that we have as educators. And then after that, in session two, will be more. Uh, I hope I'll do some demonstration depending on how this PC is behaving later. Uh, just to show you some of the tools um, like ChatGPT and whatnot and see whether you can use it for teaching and learning and also for your own any, any, you know, any part that you are doing as an academic like uh, research and uh, reply email <laughs> and, and whatnot. Okay, let's start with the first part, AI in assessment. Now, I would like to do a quick overview of AI because somehow everyone is talking about AI. Uh, the tech world is talking about AI. Everything is about AI. If you do, uh, you know, if you review grant application and all that, uh, 70 to 80% are about AI now. Uh, uh, I don't, I'm not sure about art, but I think generative AI is a common topic these days, even for journal articles. Um, just last week, I reviewed about three papers also about generative AI, so somehow it's the in game now and everyone is jumping into that bandwagon. So just to let you know, AI and, um, you know, it's nothing new. Um, we've been talking about AI for so many years, like over a few decades, uh, but it is always up and down. And what, what you need to know is AI cannot stand alone actually, because we still need human to be there. Like I put here human plus AI, there are two types of intelligence that we need to talk about. One is assistant intelligence, which is what a lot of us are doing now. Why do you need to use, not just ChatGPT, any other tools on your phone, if you notice your apps, they are an element of um, AI inside. Uh, your analytics, or Google Maps, for example, has a lot of AI going on, telling you all the traffic conditions, suggesting you different routes, and all that, those are AI. It's assisting you to make decisions, but it's not making decisions for you as AI in assistant intelligence. But if if the AI start to make decisions on their own, that would be the ultimate goal of autonomous intelligence, where they just make decisions on their own, like the autonomous car. If they decide to keep the, the, the lady in front, then you know, it, it will hit it because it's autonomous. But once you have human intervention, it's still within uh, assistive intelligence. But what is happening now, if with generative AI, we are going beyond assistive intelligence, we are going to this one, augmented intelligence, where, in a simple term, makes us cleverer, <laughs> or more cleverer in a way. Like, uh, 
Normally, you can't write a proper sentence, but now with AR, you can write a proper sentence. That's mental intelligence because your intelligence is only plus one. So that's happening now, thanks to generative AI. Or before this, you don't even know how to design graphics. Now you just put some keywords, you can design beautiful graphics. So it's augmenting or increasing your intelligence. You know, but still you have to make a decision whether you want to use it or not. So there's still human element there. So the one that we have a lot is automate, uh, automation intelligence. This is a lot in the industry, in the manufacturing world. All the robots and you know, all the uh, manufacturing machine, they are all using automation intelligence where they are doing it. Okay. So why do I tell you all this? Just to let you know, AI is not just the generative AI. There's so many things behind it. Those who are familiar with AI, then will know that there are many, many elements of AI. The one that is happening now is related to machine learning, natural language processing, and a bit of neural, not a bit, many uh, about neural networks, right? But the application of all these three are what you see now. All these generative AI tools are all related to machine learning, neural networks, and NLP, natural language processing. Like ChatGPT relies a lot on neural networks and NLP. Uh, to form the language model. Robotics has been there for quite some years. We don't really use it. I mean, people have been talking about putting robots in classes, but until now, you don't really see robots in class. You still have your, you yourself teaching. You don't have robots teaching. But the computers are there to help the lecturers to function better, uh, like a robot, but not really a robot. Okay, so just a quick intro. So these are the popular ones now, the generative AI tools that probably, there are more, actually more and more and more now, but these are some common ones that you will hear. ChatGPT is the elephant in the room, the biggest one, but the competitor to ChatGPT is, how do you put down the cloud? Right? It's French for cloud. It's, it, it, there's a second one. Yeah. This one is actually very powerful, more powerful than ChatGPT, but not available in Malaysia, only available in, uh, in, in the US. They have not released it to the world because of the server capability. It's common, when it's powerful, then you can't release it all, or else you'll crash. Just like ChatGPT as well, when it's done. When it's done. But then you have Bing Chat, which is a, an ambitious attempt by Microsoft to use GPT actually, GPT4, which is part of OpenAI's framework, but put it in Bing. Have you tried it? I thought you can see. It's actually GPT-4. If you want to pay for GPT-4 in ChatGPT, you use Bing Chat. That's the GPT-4 for you. You can upload images, it will interpret the images for you, and so on. That's Bing Chat. But the problem with Bing Chat is, it allows search, internet search. And Microsoft tried to be creative by allowing it to be super creative and churn out different different things and you know some, some silly silly which is not really accurate because Microsoft wants to be more like uh, human-like. So Bing Chat can actually make jokes, blah, 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 which is not really funny, but then it's trying to, try to be creative. So somehow it, it can manipulate the fact and make it sound like, uh, like a silly thing. Okay. If you ask somebody, you're like, oh, it's a prime subvention, he will try, uh, he blah, it's a human being. The Bing Chat will, will try to create like a joke out of it and all that if you want it to be creative, right? So, but the, 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 uh, the other two, like content generation tool like Jasper and Writer and Notion, all these uses the same engine as ChatGPT, just to let you know. So it's the GTT engine by OpenAI. Before they release ChatGPT, just so I let everyone know so that you are clear, uh, OpenAI releases GPT engine as an enterprise only for those developers, app developers. Like my case, for my, for my own study, I use a GPT engine to develop my own app. But it's not even, it, it is way before ChatGPT, that's what I'm telling you. So Jasper, all this, has been around before ChatGPT. Just that because of ChatGPT, everything suddenly, you know, become big and all this become very popular. So if you have students who are familiar with all these tools, they have been using it before ChatGPT was born. Then you have spreadsheet numerous and all blah blah blah. Now you have image generation like Big Journey, you have stable, uh, stable diffusion, Dolly, Adobe Firefly, which is quite amazing. Have you tried? Adobe Firefly, Adobe uses its own engine, but the engine is based on uh, stable diffusion. If you are familiar with stable diffusion, these are the two main engines, stable diffusion and Big Journey. Stable diffusion releases, oh, that one is Dolly by OpenAI. 
And the Wheel of Firefly uses Stable Diffusion, which is an open source version of OpenAI's Doggy. <laughs> if you're confused with, with all these, then no worries. I'm telling you everything is the same, based on the same engine, but they repackage it with their own brand. That's all I'm, I'm telling you. So, if you notice some similarities in terms of the output, it's, it's supposed to be similar, because they're using a similar engine. Right? Uh, just to, for example, like um, Grammarly. I'm sure you all, a lot of you have used Grammarly. It's actually a GPT engine, but packaged to focus only on sentence level and word level. So, but now they have new function, just like ChatGPT, uh, where you can ask it to generate content, but to even paraphrase. You know, those are based on the same engine. Okay. So to say that AI is new in the last three years, I wouldn't say so. It's it's been it's been there, but it's. Is given a new name uh, or new publicity because of OpenAI's bold attempt to make it available to everyone. So the rest you can try. I'm not going to go one by one, but we will be focusing on some of these tools later. Um, the one like uh, synthetic voices, uh, eleven labs are quite popular now. You can record your voice once, then you can just type any text. It will say the same thing, just like your voice. So if you're bored with your own way of talking for video production, you can try all this tools so that you can just type the text, it will say it out like your voice. Which is quite dangerous because that's how people do all this fake news and everything, claiming it's from all these uh, politicians, but they are not from politicians. Especially when they just show you the, the voice, everything, just that you hear the voice without seeing the face. If you notice, right, there are a lot of these scandalous audio. Somehow you only listen, but you can't see the face. Because it's done through all these kind of uh, AI tools. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start with this, uh, you know, like a uh, question. AI tools are destroying assessment. Do you agree? How many of you agree? Can you raise your hand? You don't need a tool. Yeah, I also use the word destroy. <laughs> Do you agree? Raise your hand. If you don't agree, then nobody is actually good. It challenges, but not destroying assessment. It depends. Yes, it, it depends on the student. So, it depends on the yeah. student. So, but in your personal opinion, if, if let's say you have a choice to choose, to use or not use, would you allow or not allow? How many of you would not allow the use of AI tool? Interesting, everyone. Oh, no, no. You would allow. Uh, uh, it's not that I wouldn't allow. Uh, it will help students to get faster uh, information. Yeah. But then, how literate are they, uh, are they in their writing? Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. And then, kalau dah benda tu dah sedia ada, copy paste kat situ, mm. how are they going to, you know, digest the information? Mm. So, so in that case, mm. to solve that kind of problem, don't allow it to be easier. But can you stop them from using it anyway? You can't, right? I mean, that's a, that, the same thing with all these social media as well, right? No matter how hard you want, you want to stop people from using it, they will just use it if they like to. Right? It's just a matter of how we deal with the, the consequences. And then the consequences is that they will believe all that AI is giving them, feeding them is true, yeah, which is bad. True. So, but in, in general, I think a lot of you are open for the possibility of using AI tools in your assessment. But maybe there should be a clearer guideline in what what should be allowed, what should not be allowed. I think it can be a good okay. But the painful truth, huh? I purposely put here. AI and destroying assessment, they are not well designed to be AI proof. The thing is, if we allow it to happen, then you can't stop students from using it. For example, write a three-page essay about this topic. Well, obviously, I will use to do it. Because the, the topic itself allows me to do it, right? If you ask me to produce a 30-minute act on how, they can't use ChatGPT because they have to act. You get what I mean? The assessment itself is allowing it to happen. If the assessment is allowing it to happen, then you don't blame students from doing it. You get what I mean? So, um, I mean, that's another way of looking at it. But, then we are also bogged down with the requirement by the, well, our learning objective where we specifically mentioned that they have to write something. For example, like I, I, can, I can use mine as an example because my faculty deals with a lot of language courses. One of the objectives is always about writing something. So the only way to test it is for them to write. 
But if you ask them to write in the exam hall, you have thousands, hundreds of scripts to mark. You don't want to do that. So in the end, you ask them to do a submitted report, like a three-page essay in the Microsoft Word form. Definitely, there will be a lot of copy and pasting going on. You know it's happening. Even if you put in into this plagiarism detector, even if the similarity is high, the students just don't give. You know, <laughs> they don't. They don't care because they know it's just a a pass or fail or maybe a generic pass that they just have to pass. For example, because there's no there's no need for them to to think. But if we change the assessment a bit, where they have to point. For example, they have to pitch the topic first. Then only they write the essay. Perhaps we can already evaluate their capability in, in doing it, for example. But even then, it will be more work. And as lecturers, we try our best to minimize more work. Then when you start to minimize more work, then the AI will come in and intervene. That will be easier for students as well. It's always like that, lah, you know? Mana yang lebih senang for Actually, sebenarnya dia akan jadi senang for students juga because it goes both ways. You cannot, it cannot be easier for lecturers, but then other for students is always related, right? So, but I put for now. Why? Well, if you take a look at the capability of the, the ChatGPT engine alone, right? There are four. But basically, you can write all these things in one night if you really spend time sitting there. If you really want it, you can do your whole thesis in one night. Yep. It's just a matter of whether you know what the thing is turning out. If you are already good in that sense, let's say you are really good in research, you are really good, you have wide knowledge about the topic, the moment you read the oh, book, ah, okay, this is good, you can finish everything in one night if you want to. The tricky part is when you don't understand why it's turning out, that will take you some time. Because that's why some students, even if church did generate all this content, they wouldn't be able to decide whether they want to use it or not because they don't understand what the JVT is producing. So that's another challenge. But I say for now because it's going to be easier and easier and more prevalent soon, uh, especially in the next couple of years. All you have to do is just instruct in any languages and it will just ch change into different languages. Now, like for example, ChatGPT, if you type in Malay, it's quite accurate now. If you compare to the first version in GPT 1, 2, 3. But the coming version, you'll be surprised, is even more powerful because it linked directly to this corpus by Delman Bahasa now. So basically all the formal languages will be perfectly written in, in, uh, in, you know, in, in the languages. So, not only in English, not in, in different languages. Imagine if the student were to write a thesis in Bahasa, right? You, you can't even differentiate whether that's his work or in high school. So how do you judge? That's the question that we need to answer in the next couple of years. But anyhow, let's go back to this story. So I put it for now. Let's see how we deal with it. So the capabilities of AI tools, I think we know this. Uh, I just want to recap a bit in the first half of this session so that we can, when we go to the tools, we are, we are more familiar with the, the background. AI tools all these years has, you know, has been the, the key in allowing adaptive learning and assessment. If you use it wisely for teaching and learning, and the student also knows how to use it wisely, it's actually quite powerful, to be honest. Yeah. Now, if I want to learn something, I don't have my lectures with me. If I'm the self-regulated learner, I can just go to ChatGPT. I can have a nice chat with, with that system. I can learn a lot. Yeah. If I am a self-regulated learner. Mm. If I am a person who just wants to get the things done and get my marks, you know, uh, like 24 hours before the deadline, then I can do it the same as well, but the amount of learning will not be that huge, right? Maybe a, a bit of learning, but not much. But that's the key of uh, adaptive learning. Why is it adaptive? Because the content or the output depends on the input. So if a weaker student, you ask a simple question, ChatGPT will also reply. If you are more advanced or more intelligent one, you ask intelligent question, ChatGPT will also respond. So it's adaptive to the level. If you replace ChatGPT with yourself, maybe you are you will find it challenging to address different needs. Like when you listen to this student, you know, ah, maybe I can answer you blah blah later or whatever, because you, you don't even know how to pitch your answer to that level because of the different you know, uh, background and all that. But for, for AI engine, it allows that. Not only is learning analytics, I think this is quite popular as well. You can use it to analyze your assessment. 
like how many how many students that are able to answer the question or when you when you set up your rubrics, you ask ChatGPT to evaluate. ChatGPT will tell you, for example, this rubric is not clear. You need to improve on this part, or maybe uh, uh, how to put it? It's hard to achieve that that, that, that criteria. I believe my something like that because you can ask ChatGPT to do that. I'll, I'll show you a bit later. But if you can join the session, I think in the next two weeks. Organized by Ma, uh, involving associate professor Mr. Samso from here. He will be covering extensively on how to help experts to generate rubrics, questions, and all that using ChatGPT. If you're interested, you can go for that session. Today, I'll just show you the, the rough idea of how it works. Of course, automated uh, feedback generation because you ask something, the feedback is already there immediately, right? You don't have to wait. The last one, actually, this is the irony. Uh, you can also use the AI tool to do the reverse to detect the plagiarism. So that's the irony. So it produces itself and then you will tell you, okay, I wrote this. Uh, what you can do is, you can copy parts that generated from ChatGPT and then put it back. I said, did you write this? ChatGPT was like, yes, I wrote this. Oh my god. Of course, because he has memory, right? I mean, he or she. <laughs> she the engine has memory. So it is the irony of the AI too. While it can produce the content, it will definitely remember or retrieve the database and tell you this is in my database. Obviously, this is from me. So it, it goes both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope that jumping the gun, but yeah. what, what do you have method is? Have you seen online? Yeah. They take the chat you when you turn the input into the translator, translate it into like you just yeah. use another yep. AI, and then you cannot replicate the system. Yeah, that's, if you start to manipulate the output, you, you can reduce the detection. Uh, they now will try some one of the two, or copy links. It's quite accurate. No matter how hard you trust your chat, you will still know that it's from AI. Because all the uh, to be honest with you, if you if you read through all this output, you will notice some patterns of writing which is quite similar throughout. So once you read a lot from the output, right, you start to notice, ah, this is sensibility because the style is the same all the time, and there's certain markers that is used. For example, the use of hyphenated info. If you notice in ChatGPT, the output always has this hyphenated info, which we rarely use in in normal writing, even in academic level, we don't really use the hyphenated stuff. But in ChatGPT, it's quite common. The other one is extensive use of uh, discursive markers like additionally, it's repeatedly used. And uh, also in conclusion. There's always a conclusion for everything, even though you don't need a conclusion. So for some students, they will just copy everything I think in conclusion. Actually, they don't need the conclusion part. They just copy everything. So everything's out in conclusion, in conclusion. So if you do literature review by section, if you review your student's work, once you see every section has an inconclusive, then you know that whole section is written by AI. AI. So they just they just copy and paste everything. So there's also no inconclusion. Uh, one people that I reviewed last week from one of the this is ISI Jesu. It's the same thing. Every section has an inconclusive. This is weird. And when I detect, I check it, it's obviously AI generated because there's no citation as well. So I mean, up to that level, even for publication, people are, are doing it without really. Uh, you know, how to put it, check it and do it properly. I mean, I'm not saying you can't, you can to use, uh, you know, use it to, to help you, but don't copy everything until, you know, uh, the, whole, the whole thing. But that, that is now. That's why I said for now, because once you see all this development, then you will see the, the writing becomes more creative, the, the writing becomes more personalized. There's also the, the cloud, as I mentioned to you, cloud, uh, the strong cloud, cloud. <laughs> That one is even more powerful. You can upload your own writing, it will detect your style, it will write everything in your style. Wow! That's, that's, that's even more scary. I mean, even more scary. Yeah. So, because let's say you love to use moreover, everything you write has moreover. So, whatever content generated from that uh, will have moreover. Because you love to use that term moreover, for example. Or you have a certain way of writing, let's say you love to start with the adjective in the first sentence or whatever, it will start to follow your style. So, they kind of. That's the scary part of AI too, where you start to adapt to your own writing. So, it begs the question, how are you going to penalize all this in the next couple of years? 
Right. Are you going to say this is wrong? Is right? <laughs> and, and I always think. I'm just keeping it open, right? So, um, yeah, ChatGPT. I think is the famous one. The Bing is the is the GPT-4 engine. Have you used this? How many of you have used Bing Chat? No. Bing Chat. If you use, uh, if you have this, is, uh, this one, Microsoft Edge, that would be better. There's Bing Chat already here at the corner here. If you if you have Microsoft Edge, you just have to sign in uh, to your Microsoft account. You can use Unimas account. Then you just click this one. Big chat is already here. So of course this one is the attending searches. Uh, but let's say let's put disease. But this is this is not really a chat. But you can type something here like uh, tell me uh, uh, tell me a joke maybe. <laughs> I think this is not the real thing. Let me just go and check. <coughs> as far as remember, you have to sign in because you can't use it without signing in this one. Here you have to sign in. Where is the safe search? So if you are using ChatGPT, GPT-4 is only available for GPT Plus users if you pay, right? If you don't pay, you are using 3.5, which is already quite powerful. But Bing directly integrates uh, the uh, GPT-4. So if you don't want to pay, you can use uh, Bing Chat to, to try out the uh, uh, GPT-4. Next week, uh, OpenAI will release the, the multi-model search, like this one. You can upload an image, and then uh, ChatGPT can interpret the image for you. You can even ask ChatGPT to do something with the image. For example, you upload an image of a camera like this, you ask, how do I operate this camera? And then it will start to search for the camera setting and everything, tell you how to operate the, the camera based on the photo. That is next week for OpenAI, but Bing has already integrated here. So you can upload any pictures from this. Let me try to upload something here. <coughs> just upload any photo, and then you can ask to describe this photo. But what I notice in Bing is quite slow. That's the disadvantage of Bing. <coughs> ChatGPT's advantage is the speed of analyzing. So I've uploaded a photo, and then I will ask. Uh, being to describe this photo. So it takes some time. The one on my slide, you thought you can get, I uploaded a, a graph only. I said explain this graph, then the explanation comes up. It's accurate. Because I check the, uh, the info. One thing good is, once it, you upload anything, first thing it will do, it will check other resources of the same image first. So if you can, if, if you can find references for this, then you will put references at the back. You can see here, if you click this one here, it's actually reference for whole content. So my question to you is, if your student did this, is it okay or not okay? <laughs> if your student did this in the report, how do you know, right? Yeah. How would you know? <laughs> the only way you would know is probably you will copy paste this one and then put it up online and say, okay, this is AI generated, but you are, are you pretty sure it's AI generated? Then so they can say, no, I didn't do it, I did it on my own. Mm. What if we let them 
we are the students yeah, to answer, yeah. our... That's where you have to do other ways of assessment, which means right. you have to try out, out other, yeah. you know, other forms of assessment. Which is why a lot of lectures uh, take the easy way out by not allowing this to happen by, by changing assessment. Instead of maybe writing a report, you have to do something else. The report is just maybe at the lower percentage. Because they know that they will be. I mean, it depends on how you want to see it, but let me go back to this one. You will see, this is a photorealistic image of two people on a bicycle in a rural setting. How do you know? So people faces are blurred to protect the privacy. Did they blur? Oh yeah, they blur. Okay. The setting is a rice field with palm trees in the background. That's not palm, but I think it's coconut. Close. Close. The sun is setting in the background, creating a warm glow, you see? The person in the front is wearing a white shirt and hat. Amazing, right? So for a student who doesn't know how to describe something, this will help them. This will help them. Because they oh, okay, this is how you describe a photo. <laughs> or an image, right? Of course, they still have to check. But you can see, I'm sorry, I'm able to see the image. Savvy, if you have any other question. This is something ridiculous about being chat. This one also, they copy paste. <laughs> They, they, um, how to put it? It will try to scan the image from all the sources. You can see here, the many sources first. here. Yes. So most likely you will see these are not written by me. It's written by the other sources. What happened is it compiles all the description and then reformat it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So maybe in Pinterest it says this the first line is in Pinterest, for example. Then the subsequent line is in get the image, for example. So it says to put everything in to look like it's a whole package. You got know what I mean? So, but the good thing here in, in Big is because it can search, they, you can still see the sources here, which is an advantage. For teaching and learning, to me, this is very powerful because you save a lot of time teaching students on how they can do it on their own, at their own level, at their own pace. <coughs> Imagine if you were to do this in class. I mean, let's say in my case, if I'm teaching students how to describe something, by the time I finish teaching one or two students, I mean the rest will be sleeping. Especially the weaker ones, right? Because they can't find the, the right adjectives and all that. But now they can just upload something and then they learn how to write it. And then you can ask them, based on the first sentence, you paraphrase it in a different way. Something like that. But in terms of um, your own use, you can see it's quite powerful and you will search for similar images for you. These are all generated using AI, powered by Dawn E. You can see Bing now as Bing Image Creator. Now, if you uploaded a photo, you want an alternative version, it will generate an alternative version for you, and it looks quite mm. superb. <laughs> right? These are all, this is coming to ChatGPT next week. So, because uh, Microsoft paid OpenAI, so they have the liberty to release it first. Uh, OpenAI will release it next week, for, but only for GPT-4 uh, plus users. 3.51, you have to wait. But you can always use uh, Big Chat to, to enjoy the similar, similar, uh, you know, use. Google is still, Google Bar is still lagging behind. You can the other one just for the for those who are unfamiliar with Bar. Google has its own Bar version. Still lagging behind, but getting more and more powerful because they just don't want to lose uh, the. Uh, Have you tried Bart? Yeah. Bart Sensor? So now the top three for this kind of, uh, we call this as, um, how to put it, uh, open-ended AI engine. Open-ended as in, it's not fixed for one purpose, it's multi-purpose multi use. You can do whatever you want with this kind of uh, uh, open-ended uh, chat engine like Bing Chat, Google Bar, and also OpenAI, ChatGPT. That's the three major ones. The cloud, unfortunately, you can't try it yet, but once it's available, you will be amazed by the capability. You can see now, um, Google Bar is imitating ChatGPT. You can you can have something like create a language study plan, 
you will, it will generate a prompt for you immediately, and then you just have to press submit, and then you will get the you know the output. Now, Bart uses Google Engine. That means all the resources in Google database will be used for dating. So basically, if you talk about writing, not stable yet. Uh, Google Bart should be more powerful because it can crawl all the scholarly works in Google Scholar by right, by right. But now, because it, it refuses to, you know, it, Google is a bit arrogant. They refuse to use GPT formula. They use their own uh, algorithm, so a bit slower. So it's not really beautiful yet. But if they were to use GPT engine, which some people are trying to merge, it would be very powerful because imagine having access to all the scholarly work in Google Scholar and then the same output generation power, you know, the capability can generate the whole article in a short time with citation accurate ones, not the fake one like what is happening in the uh, chat GPT now. But you can see the powerful use here. And you can add image as well, upload image as well, same thing. Just to let you know, so you can you can experiment with this. Yeah, so just put a prompt. Let me scratch. Oh, yes. Okay. So apart from ChatGPT, you have to be familiar with Google Bard and also Bing Chat, just in case your students are using it as well. <laughs> okay, you can see here. Sorry, I can't help the images with people yet. This is because of the. Um, uh, not the uh, European Union um, data privacy law. Uh, you, you can't use faces. So if you want to upload just now, you can notice Bing actually blur the face when you search. Privacy blur hides faces from the chat. But if you upload something which without face, without faces, then it should be fine. So this is the EU law, like they just want to be nice to EU, so they, they, they follow. Actually, they, you can bypass this by downloading the, by downloading the extension. <laughs> they thought you would know, discover, I will not teach you here, but you, you just search for extension for part, then you can install it, and then you can bypass everything. What I mean here is, uh, some, some, some of the things they are trying to control because of the EU, uh, European Union's uh, privacy law. See, you can see here, I upload this one, and then you see the image you sent shows a view of a city skyline at night from a narrow alleyway. Yeah, a bit, but it's actually on top of the building. Yeah, but then you can see on this uh, description. Okay, but this is Google Bart, yeah? So you can sign in and then try it out. And then also, Google Bart at the moment uh, support only the major languages, but Remember that Google has access to Google Translation, uh, Google Translate with multiple languages, so they are activating the different languages uh, so, so again, uh, the, the, the powerfulness of this thing will be even more scarier. Okay, so I think you can destroy it on your own, on your own now. ChatGPT, do I have to demonstrate? I believe all of you have used this. No? <laughs> Not really. Some may be still new. Just a quick one. Before we pause it, uh, ChatGPT is chat.openai.com. Like I said, OpenAI decided to go in the to go into this game by releasing their own version. Before that, they let other people use it. Now they use it by creating their own. So you have to log in using your account. How many of you have the plus version? None. Sure. Are you sure? <laughs> Why? Why? Why not? Nobody on plus. Seriously? Huh? Be the one to pay. Yeah. No one want to pay. No one want to pay. Seriously? This is, this is ninety ringgit per month. Is you can sacrifice your astro. <laughs> My my access is actually for developers access, so I have access to the plus. Hiya. I still I still have to pay, but for the developer it's not yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but what happened in other uses I know um, when I when, when I conduct this kind of workshop, normally what happens is the institution will subscribe to a few and then they share the email. Yeah. The only the only tricky thing is because everyone can read whatever you ask. So every time you use it, you have to make sure that nobody is using 
Like if I sign in, you sign in, you will crash because of the server load. Mm -hmm. You get me? Like you are you are asking questions and then the other side is also using your account to ask you questions. But I, I tested it out for a few accounts, like multiple simultaneous logins, should still fine, not that not that problematic. Unless you, unless if the account is shared by hundred people, then it's a bit oh, no, obvious. <laughs> Uh, normally it's four, four people or five people, you just share the cost. So that's about 20 bucks or per person. Why not, right? Then you want the cost share. Okay. Now why do I say this? Because ChatGPT, the current free version 3.5, has no advantage on many things. Because in GPT-4, you can install plugin. So just, this is not asking you to subscribe, just to let you know if students subscribe, if, if, you never know, the students are willing to do whatever they want to achieve whatever they get. If students are subscribing to the past version, the full version, they have this browser Bing. Of course Bing is already Bing, you can use Bing to do this. This one, plugins. If you click on plugins, you can enable a lot of plugins, scholarly, proper tags, plus there's many more. If you scroll down, there are many plugins now, and it's scarier because before this, if you ask ChatGPT to, to generate um, references, it will just simply do some hypothetical references which are all wrong. But once you install the scholarly plugin, it will generate only the, the relevant. Um, articles and relevant journals, so it's still generate references, but it's the correct ones. So, <laughs> now you want to subscribe, but you can search more here. I mean, I, I, I won't go into all, but the key advantage of GPT-4 is all these plugins. There are many now. You can see it's 196 pages of things. Wow, right? There are many, many things. And mostly, mostly are helping you to narrow down your scope. Let's say you are into copywriting or not, you are from marketing, you can install the copywriting tool. So when you open up your ChatGPT, it's all about all this marketing strategy or how you streamline your, uh, your content for Instagram, for Twitter, or ask you <laughs> You can see here, right? Okay. Let's say if I, I try, maybe I try, and then you can see. Let's say I, I try to write a paragraph on the impact of AI on, let's say, fine art with three references. Let's say I did a very simple prompt. Right? Oh, okay. Authorization error, I think, my... Let me see. No, 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 I think the... <laughs> <laughs> Must be one of the I didn't allow it. Let's try one first. Oh, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to tell you. If you only use ChatGPT, you need to make sure your PC is okay as well. Uh, same like Mid Journey, it uses your PC resources. So the faster your PC, the better the output actually. If your computer is slow, it's, it's lazy to dig deeper, it will give you the narrow one. <laughs> so you need to go for a good because, because the, uh, the, the rule is to speed, for, for speed, so you will try to get as, you know, the fastest resources. Let's see. Let's see. What happened to my plugin? Uh? Something wrong with my plugin. It's either the server or uh, I chose the wrong plugin. Let me see. Uh. Somehow everything doesn't work. Could be the browser because I'm using Edge. Oh, now okay. It's a bit slower if you're plugging, but then still okay. It's not that slow like like big is now. <laughs> I'm not asking you. Okay, you can see here. You can see the link is linked. If you click, you can check whether it's true. That yeah, is true. You can click whether it's true. But the problem with this button is okay. This button, this button for so scholar assist. Scholar Assist only uses database from pre-published papers from this, this link. 
I wanted to use the other one just now, but then someone authorized it. I think I need to enable it. In the the other one, scholarly, you will need the scholarly one, the Google Scholar resources. This one only from from this preprint. You know this preprint database, right? Yeah. This one. Have you seen this? Yeah. Sometimes you see this kind of paper, right? Uh, a, this one. These are called preprints. They are not published yet. They are uploaded here as a preprint. In some um, university like Cornell University and some, some, some US uh, universities, they recognize this as a publication. In some parts of the world, they don't recognize this as a publication because it's preprint right so but anyhow to me even if it's preprint preprint what you can do is normally these these people they want to be the first to publish they will upload it here first then the people will eventually be published somewhere anyway so what you can do is this is 2021 right all you have to do is maybe you search this in Google Scholar so if you find it in Google Scholar, you can take the latest reference and put it in your yeah. in your reference list. Yeah. Because it's exactly the same paper. You get what I mean or not? Yeah. Just get the update. So basically AI is actually making the intelligent one more intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No more if you search this one, this one not yet. Ah uh, yeah, already published in ACM. Yeah. So I can just click this one, copy the citation, put it in my Google Scholar. Yeah. 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 Even though I actually read it from here. Yeah. 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 Because preprint, preprint is always this, uh, these people, they want to be fast, right? And then the rule in preprint is you can publish the same paper in preprint in any other journal without any modification. Because it's allowed. If you submit to one journal and then you are published in the journal, that's not allowed. But for preprint, yes. Like people upload to SSRN as well. That's, I think that's UK based, SSRN. You upload the, the paper to SR first because you want to be the first. You scared that you lose out on the citation. Then you submit the same paper to the other journal. Then after a couple of months, the journal accepts it. It's exactly the same paper that you uploaded to the preprint database. So this is a strategy for those who want to change citation. Upload preprint first before the paper is accepted. Accepted because by the time the paper is accepted, accepted it's probably one year later. Then that thing is already passy. That's the strategy. Yeah. Open to public. Because this one is like, uh, you can see here, it's like this concept of open science where uh, your free print is uploaded for sharing, for everyone to comment. The, the, the culture is, I upload my free print, you comment. Ah, you know, you know. Yeah, but nobody actually comment. <laughs> so you, you just make use of the advantage of people sending you first, then your paper will be sent for review. There may be some changes to some part because of the reviewer's comment. But essentially, you will see the content, especially the findings, are the same. I've seen some paper, even for certain journal, they just accept point blank, no modification done. You know, like accept as these kind of cases. Maybe this one, there may be some changes, but the title is the same. So if you were to do comparison, if you look, it's identical, that means no changes at all to the one published. Right? Okay. So, pro and, pro and cons, I think. So if you are if you are worried that people will copy your idea, then you might want you might not want to upload it here yet until you are pretty sure that that thing is copyrighted to you. That's fine. Like one month, sorry, not one month, even a couple of weeks after ChatGPT was released, you, if you go to this database, there's so many papers on ChatGPT, but it's not published yet. <laughs> they just upload here because they want people to to cite them. So whoever come first will be top in the, in the list. Okay. Right, this is ChatGPT, you can see it's late, but they, there's no references, right? So you can give another prompt. Provide any references uh, for the site work in APA Let's see whether you can do that. APA now allows, I think, up to 25 names, so you don't be surprised. Huh? This one. Last time APA limits to the first five names and the last, uh, so the first six names and one last seven. Now you can list as many up to 20. So you don't be surprised. But you can see all are. Uh, Unpublished, repeat, right? Okay. Now let's let's try the let's say I write let's say I give you let's try the free one. Huh? Let's try the free one. Let's try the free one. Huh? You cannot you cannot trust the free one. Yeah, yeah. 
You can see here. You can see like all these things, but this one because you, I, I, uh, yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit weird, right? And then if you click this one, it, it comes from a normal website. And this one doesn't really help much as well. So this is an E4, right? Huh? This is, you know, this is 3.5, the free one. The last time when I tried with the, especially Malini, they always got the, it's going to be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four still doing that? Four, no. Four, even with yeah. Malayne. Yeah, Malayne, they were identified nicely. Oh, okay. Actually, the database also depends a lot on the, the work itself. So, let's say if you cite Malay name, if other people have cited it, then they will retrieve it from the database, then it will be more accurate. If nobody has used that resource before, then you probably still see some errors here and there. Like some common use of not articles that have been commonly cited, then you get the student one. But if it's rarely cited or never been cited, then you don't see it. But again, these are all some, some differences we need to take a look. So what, have, what, 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 what is happening now is what if students are willing to pay and get access to all this data? And then they did this and they submit to you, how are you going to evaluate? It? Perfect! Hey. <laughs> right. But for MYP, I think it's okay because MYP, you still have that uh, oral component project. Yeah. Uh, that one, you can, you know, you can kind of evaluate them. But then, uh, yeah. sorry, I think we should know also because your daily conversation, class conversation, you yeah. know the level of knowledge yeah. and yes. just English. <laughs> yeah. But then suddenly they submit the artwork, you have 100% wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said, uh, uh, you know, in, in a previous workshop as well, the, the best way to detect is actually us. The way we communicate with students, we kind of know the students' level from the, from the communication that we have. The issue will be if we have too many students. Like, if you have 300 students, the chances of you actually know 300 of them will be very minimal, right? If your class is small, like, it's still manageable because you kind of know, right? That's the great part. But it's capable of doing this. Uh, I can't remember the exact number, but GPT-4 definitely can process 10 times more words than GPT-2.5. That's why I said you can get your own pieces because you can, you can fit it with so many pages of stuff and you just paraphrase everything. But once the function of uploading next week for image, next they will upload PDF. So you can also upload PDF and then it will summarize for you. So you can upload the whole thesis, for example, the whole thesis, 300 pages of thesis, rewrite this thesis in a different way. Put Malaysian into the context. So you get a whole thesis. Wait. Oh, wait. Nampak PhD tiga kali, you boleh kan? No, 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 no. Of course, obviously you can't. You can't go through the process. But, but, for students who are doing FYP only, that is the easy way out. Right? Because it's just a minor component of the graduation requirement, right? But then, so that's not the issue that you will do. Okay. If you, if you try, just, I think before we take a short break, I'll just show you this. Um, it's already happening in uh, Science Space. Yeah. But Science Space is using GPT-3. It uses GPT-3, but it pays only for GPT-3. So right now, they're in the process of changing it to GPT-4, and then OpenAI itself will be allowing this. If you want to try, you can try this one later. You just upload a paper and then it will summarize the whole paper for you. But somehow it's not as accurate as the GPT-4 uh, engine. So imagine once they open up all these features, you know, all this part in where you can upload the PDF, ask PDF and all that, and they start to increase the database size, the accuracy and everything. It's getting harder and harder to, to differentiate, right? Unless you really know your students. Okay? What else? Uh, yeah, I think for now we... Can take a pen. You see. Oh yeah, maybe we, we wrap up the first part and then we take five and then we continue. The second part is getting more more interesting. How do you detect the mistake? Okay, so concern of AI abuse, my question to you is Alexa, what's your main concern? What's your main concern actually? 
student copy and paste it only or there are other, you know, other concerns when it comes to AI tools? We have not even talked about the AI, the image generation tool, right? Like if you ask yourself to do posters, they can just give a prompt and then the posters come up. Is that counted as graphic design or no? But how do you know? So, Anyone want to share this? Maybe you have experienced some. How many of you have experienced this? Like point blank copy and paste from ChatGPT so far? Or Google? Yes, Google. Yes, yeah. Google Common. But that's a probably the desperate attempt. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you don't have time. ChatGPT. Anyone? No. Sorry. Yeah. ChatGPT. Yeah. Uh, if, if you have caught any student submitting work directly from ChatGPT. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. The whole assignment. Yeah. Jojo, like, uh, what? Do 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 what? No, no, I think, I think, I think it's the, the issue is students, like, like I said, the, uh, they don't understand what they're doing, they, they don't understand, even if the ChatGPT generates all this content, they don't really know what is there, they just assume that it's, it's okay, and it's correct, they just copy and paste. Um, yeah, I think the concern is still the originality, uh, or the, what we call it as, uh, the ownership. I think the concern, based on my conversation with other lectures, they don't mind to then use it as long as they know that they contributed to their content. Like they, they actually did something with the content to make sure that it's suitable, like they, they rephrase, or they read through, and then they take out some parts and all that. That one, I think, is still reasonable to be allowed. But if they just point blank copy and change, that's the problem. Because it's the same thing as they copy and paste on Google. Like, you know, it doesn't matter where they come from. Uh, you know? Come from different sources. I think that's the main concern. We just want them to know that they own the thing, or we are also safe in terms of evaluating that original work, right? But again, like I said, it's going to be harder and harder. The challenge is going to be really, really tricky. Okay? So, these are the main concerns, like I said. It's always number one. That plagiarism is always number one, even before ChatGPT. Ever since we have internet, I think that's the main issue. Even before internet, plagiarism has been there. Take a book and copy the whole thing. I mean, a lot of people are, were, were doing that before that. But now it's a little more easier because of uh, ChatGPT. The other one is bias and discrimination in terms of the content, actually. Um, whether you like it or not, if you are putting certain perspective into open AI ChatGPT for 3.5 especially, it can't relate to certain culture. Now, if you ask it to explain certain concept in Malay, Malay context or you know in a certain ethnicity, they would not be able to do that. So they will just give very generic kind of description, and then they just add the word Malay in it, for example, assuming that that is universal to all. So that's that's dangerous because if students are doing that a lot, then they will be oh okay Malay is like that, for example. We know it's, but it's wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a there's a. There's a danger there. Inaccurate information as well, there are quite a number before this, but now they are minimizing. I think now the accuracy is almost uh, 99 now. The GPT 3.5, the accuracy rate was about 80 at max. Before it was about 60 plus only, but now it's close. The core one is 99. With Bing, because Bing contributed to OpenAI, so it allowed OpenAI to use the search engine, so because they can search and verify and double check before they give you the, the information. Of course, it will also relate to open reliance of technology. I think now, if you give an assignment to your students, anything to do with reporting, writing, first thing they will think of is, ask ChatGPT. Before this, they will Google first. If they can find some similar paper or similar topic, right, they will download the uh, document from some other universities. That's the old way of doing it. Google, oh, this actually gave the same topic as the other, you can see, they just copy and then just edit the name. Those, those were the days. Now, they can ask ChatGPT to personalize the content to fit to the lecturer, right? Lecturer say, relate your answer to the Sarawak context. Okay. Or P, the rubric, put it in ChatGPT. ChatGPT will try to relate to Sarawak context, even though it's wrong. 
they will just add the word Sarawak in the here and there just to feel like it's Sarawak. Actually, if you read carefully, it's wrong, right? Yes. Right? They will say like, uh, they probably use some indigenous group from New Zealand or whatever, and then, you know, they just change the New Zealand to Sarawak in some cases. But now it's getting better. I mean, before this, it was quite messy. Now, because we can report if it's wrong, the more people are reporting that it will know. But it will increase this. So anytime you give that kind of assignment, Joe, kita chat GPT, you know, that kind of thing to chat on chat GPT. Alright? Not just chat GPT now, you have so many options now. If you don't want chat GPT, you can use Big Chat, you can use Google Bar, and more and more are coming up, right? So these are, these are the key concerns. So how, how is AI aiding dishonesty? Just to let you know, number one is of course automated content generation. Not just for text, for images, for audio, for video. Now if you're lazy, you're busy, you don't have time to do your slides, you can just give prompt to uh, some tools like uh, the one I listed just now. Just give a prompt, it will prepare the slide for you. The whole slide with all the content, images, everything that. If you are, if you are, you know, if you have some content ready, you want the content to be converted to video, that can be done as well. But of course, uh, some problem yet there. But the things are getting better in terms of like, text and images. These two are quite okay. Image, uh, images, and also text. The other one is faking creativity. Hmm. Faking as in they don't copy and paste. That's why I say it's beyond copy and pasting now. See? Now if you ask, they don't really copy and paste. They ask ChatGPT to personalize, to be creative, to change here and there, to make it look like original. But actually we know it's not. That is the dangerous part. Because you can't differentiate whether they copy and paste or not. Because if you copy everything and put it on Google, you can't find it. But you know it's from somewhere. <laughs> right? Because it has been. It's like I said, like faking creativity or faking originality, right? Cheating detected evasion, this is for more, you know, more advanced students. I have seen some. For ODL mode, for example, some, some universities, they offer online classes, uh, and online exam, using proctoring tool. Now you can install AI to pretend that you're there, actually you're not there. So you're answering the question from somewhere else, but the, the camera keep on seeing your face going up and down, doing something, you know, like that. So it's like some, some AI tool, uh, for you to use for to beat the proctoring system. Like a supplier already. Wow. Yeah. Like and so when when come ask me what is the best proctoring tool in the world for online ODI, I said there's nothing. No, no need. There's no need for, for proctoring when you don't ask that kind of question. Don't ask students to do online exam, no problem. <laughs> then no 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 need for proctoring. That's my that's my point. Just ask them to go to some center, take the test in front of you. Why not? <laughs> If they want a degree, they will do that, right? So we, um, they still ask you to go to the test center to take the test. I mean, for submitted assignment, you can still tap it. Right? Uh, Chacha, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this time you show us how to, the example you show in the chat in the piece. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please write a paragraph on da 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 yeah, yeah. or oh, right. yeah. Have you tried to check with it turning in? Does it show something? Yeah, later on, later. Part two. You will, will be surprised that turning in can be tagged now. But the problem is, everything seems natural, uh, naturally written. And if students raise the, raise the question, I, I didn't, I wrote it on my own. How do you, how do you use the Turning In report to justify it? Because when you search online, you can't find the exact copy. But Turning In say, it sounds like AI generated. That's why, that's why um, Turning In has never been definite. If you notice the language used in uh, Turning In, even for similarity index before this, it will just say similarity index. It doesn't say it's plagiarized. It say it's similar. Mm. It doesn't mean that you plagiarize. So student can say, maybe the way I write and the way he writes. <laughs> 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 maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's always it's always hard to justify it. That doesn't fit, right? I think some some you know when you call student for plagiarism, if you go to that other place, it's so hard to justify because the student will will beat the system. In the end, you say, okay, take the test again. You can't really do more than that because <laughs> you know what I mean, right? I mean, these are all the and of course impersonation, uh, impersonation does have same thing here, uh, defect and voice synthesis. I think the, the the scarier one is actually voice synthesis. For defect, the the video can you know you can quite easily detect the the flaws because when you move the mouth, everything is. But audio is quite accurate now. I think you have seen people doing all this singing in a different voice, yeah. using certain song, right? It sounds so real. 
I mean, there's a minor error, but sound real. I imagine it will be better and better. Right? Okay. So I think this is the scary part. I think the first, first one, scary faking. You know, it's, it's no longer copy and paste things. So I'm not really concerned. If, in fact, if students copy and paste, it will be easier for us. <laughs> yeah. It will be easier for us if they copy and paste from Google because we can just search, okay, you, you copy from this source or you copy from this article. It's easier for us to justify as well or, or to, to penalize that. But now when you search, you can't find it. Or if you ask ChatGPT, GPT say, it's, it, yeah, I think I may have written this. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, I mean, you can't be definite on that kind of decision making. Okay? But of course, you need to verify that with this. You know, these are all very. How to put it? Automat automated kind of content, so you might want to verify with this too. Okay? I didn't use any plugin here. If you want, you can go to this new chat, go to this plugin. Uh, under plugin store, you can find any presentation. Okay. Oh yeah, Slimaker. Slimaker, Smart Slime, so many now. So just install and then you will generate it into PPT. Okay? Not asking you to, 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 to purchase, but I mean to, to take a look at its capability. So far, only only um, ChatGPT allows this kind of plugin, and the rest are not yet. Even Google Bard or, or, or Microsoft Bing is not. Up to that level yet. Right? So you can imagine once OpenAI allows all these uploading or images and all that, it will be a little more uh, powerful. Okay? So let's just go straight to this part, which is I think the question that all of us are trying to answer. To what extent can we use AI generative content? Not only use, I mean, to, to, to what extent do we allow this to, to be used by our students? If, if, if let's say I ask you all to give a percentage, right? To, to roughly give a percentage in terms of the extent, right? How many of you allow less than five? Fifty percent. Lower than fifty percent. More than fifty percent. All of you, would you allow this question? Let's say in general, let's say for your student, how many of you would allow more than fifty percent content which are AI generated? No. Uh, depend on the assessment. Depend on the assessment. Assessment. If it's analysis, then it's more than fifty percent. Uh -huh. They have to present the. They have to do the session. So I know what they are. So that I, I'm sure that they know what they are presenting. But still, still, you allow them to go beyond fifty, lah. Technically, yes. Okay. So what is lower than fifty? In what cases it will be lower than fifty? <laughs> So in terms of in terms of the first how 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 do I put this? The, the first version that they submit to you. Right, the first version, like, in whatever form, in a, in, a, in a written form, for example, would you allow like all this AI generated content immediately, or you will you will filter it immediately? Like the moment you know it's AI generated, you will just say, okay, this one, I will not mark it. How many of you will do that, or you will, you will mark it and then you will reassess? So basically, you accept first, right? So basically, you accept first. Uh, nobody will do the. But how, how do you know it's hundred percent or not hundred percent until you check it? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So basically, you still have to accept it first. Even it's more than fifty percent, then you will decide whether you will try other ways or. This is the tricky part. If you read all the guidelines in the world, uh, written by different, different universities, nobody actually stated the percentage. Of course, because nobody can say, like you said, it's very subjective and kind of cause. I mean, how do you measure the percentage, right? Uh, the KPT has yet to release the guideline, even though KPT promised it in March. Uh, the, I think, I, think I, I, I know the reason because they can't put 
it on paper, like whether they can allow it or disallow it, but they say they are okay with it as long as university has this mechanism of checking and uh, stopping students from uh, copy and pasting online and all that. But I think like many of you agree, it will be very hard to check. So the only way to, uh, to go or forward would be reassessment, uh, using a different means of yeah. assessing. Now my question to you is, if you know that that would happen, why don't you change the assessment form in the first place? Why do you still allow written work then? If you know that they will use all this change content, why do you allow it in the first place? This is my, I'm, I'm, I'm not questioning your decision, I'm just asking you why. Because from knowing your why, then we will be able to have a, you know, like an idea on how to solve that. Because I asked the same question to, to some extent before, so I want to know from you as well. Why do you allow certain assessment to be done, even though you know that that kind of assessment would, uh, would kind of trigger students to use all this AI generated content? Any, any feedback? <laughs> <laughs> yes, key is majority is not using AI, so you should allow it. Did you actually check your student? You'll be surprised that more than 50% do not know the existence of ChatGPT until the friend actually tell them. Now you say more, oh, right? Do a check, do a check. My, my survey recently with uh, three universities, this is for a side project with UM, 48% only. 48? 48. 48 knows the existence. Those that, those that actually tried it, those that actually tried it, it's about 32. And the data is quite similar to other, other parts of the world. You know, we thought that everyone knows. Actually, people don't. Like, like we assume a lot of people are on TikTok actually know. The data shows differently. We assume that people are on TikTok looking at all these political stuff. Actually, if you look at the data, by actually no, it's only very, very, very niche kind of group of people who are on TikTok. But we assume, oh, this generation is TikTok generation. Everyone is on TikTok. Actually, you know, check your friends' phone or even your your students' phone. Some of them do not even have TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 could be. I mean, that's one of the good things about when we check the... Uh, of course, that was done, that was done um, last year, so this year probably more. But I assume, I assume now it will be more. The percentage will go up, I assume more, because everyone will be talking. Before this, because even though you ask new intake, if you want to do a proper survey, do with a new intake now, do a quick survey, how many of you check you didn't know? I think you can get less than two, because they are not here yet. In school, nobody actually uses it yet. They may have read those in the urban schools, but in most schools, nobody actually tells them about this. They probably read about it, but they never, they probably read about it, but they don't even know what it is. Once they go into UC for the first two semesters, ah, now I know this exists. Now I will start to use it. Same thing like how we assume every student knows e-learning. When they come to university, actually, a lot of them don't know because they're only familiar with Google Classroom and all that. When they go to eat, they don't even know how to navigate. And these are all the generation that you thought are all that savvy, but they are not, right? Yeah. So that's one reason what, what, to justify what uh, Dasa was trying to say. You still allow this kind of assessment because you know that not many are familiar. So it's unfair for you to say no to the assessment just because some people are using ChatGPT and then you, you discredit the ability of others. So that would be one reason. But I think that would be slowly diminishing. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not just that the students don't know. Uh, how about the lectures? Do you, that you get <laughs> lectures? Good point, good point. In fact, the data for lectures is the worst than students. Some of them heard about it but never tried it. Yeah. In fact, some claim they have used it but they used the wrong one. <laughs> they thought that is ChatGPT but it's not ChatGPT. Because earlier days, there are many people trying to capitalize on this, so they came up with all kinds of apps with the same name. Actually, it's not uh, that ChatGPT. So, so when when we did workshop and all that, we realized they claim they have used it, but they are using the wrong one. Oh, they have, they don't even know what what it is, right? Yeah, it's quite true. That's, that's another reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the things that I'm experiencing is uh, when the students come in with their write up, right? Um, sometimes when you read on the, I mean, uh, on the grammar it would be very hard to understand. 
Yes. So my problem is uh, whether or not I'm going to introduce them to yes. use the ChatGPT to at least check the grammar so that we don't need to crack our head to understand yeah. the... So what is your point on that? Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's, that's the next time. That's the, uh, the dilemma because all this while, before the existence of ChatGPT, what do we do? Your thesis, your FIP requires proofreading. Ask somebody else to proofread. Isn't that asking somebody to edit as well? And then that somebody could be very perfect and just write everything in a perfect language, but we know that this student's English is worse. Is that okay? Is that not okay? <laughs> now that human is gone, AI is replacing these humans with doing this poor reading. AI is doing it, so is it not okay? You know what I mean? That's the dilemma now, because all this while, Every time we encounter a student with problematic writing, we will ask them to go and send for proofreading. And when they send for proofreading, it's actually somebody else writing it, not him or her. But we are okay with that. Then they're now, paying. They're paying for that. Yeah, and they're paying for words. Well. Per, per, per words, words. Right. And now that they don't have to pay, <laughs> they can do it with ChatGPT. So is that not okay? I mean, I, I'm not asking. I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I'm, I'm raising this kind of question because before this. Any tool, like I said, will always have this you know, uh, dilemma. Whether you want to introduce it, they use it, and then they start churning out all the content, or just go specific. Like Grammarly is a perfect example of GPT only for grammar, but it will not really generate content. It will just check for grammar. But when when you use that kind of tool, some students dislike it because they still have to put effort to you know, make changes to the sentence on their own. The Grammarly the, the, the app says this is wrong and then you have to fix the <laughs> They have to put effort. They will always go for the easy uh, way out by asking it to fix everything, right? So that's the dilemma. So I can't answer that question whether you are okay with that or not, but I think the way forward is either uh, to Whatever suggestion that I, I notice to counter this kind of problem will mean more work for uh, for us. Yeah. Whatever suggestion, I can I can guarantee that. Whatever suggestion to stop this from happening or to reduce this from happening will mean more work for lecturers. Are we ready for that? Hmm. If we are not okay with more work, that means we have to kind of allow this to happen, but with certain guidelines. So we have to be more specific to say, okay, fine. I know they're going to use ChatGPT, but this is the line that you cannot cross. That would be the like a give and take kind of approach, right? So because the issue is always this one copyright intellectual property, if they only write for FYP or for internal assignment, you have less headache. Because it's not gonna be it's not gonna be published. But if they start doing it for publication, then you'll be very careful of this. Right? Issue of intellectual property, copyrighted, uh, even though they, they use ChatGPT to produce. Somehow along the way, ChatGPT uses somebody's uh, article and you know, we write certain paragraph and do exactly the same kind of thing. So you have to be more careful. But it's, if it's only internal use, you can deal with that on your own, right? It's safer. The other one is quality and reliability uh, because of this uh, accuracy problem. But it's getting better and better now. Before this is worse, but now I think it's better. Uh, the issue is always on the second part, the reliability. Not really on quality, but reliability. Because it sounds so nicely written that it, it seems too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. Especially when they start reporting data that is so, so well written. The data seems to be so nice supporting your work, but then when you check, it's actually wrong. Like the study never did that, or the study never, never get that kind of result. But the way it was produced to you sounds so convincing. That is the part where a lot of students do not know how to, how to differentiate. Even us, sometimes, we don't have time to filter every single thing that students submit, right? Then you, you ask students to submit an essay, let's say three page essay of five references. Did you actually check the references? I mean, even if they pick one of it, you, don't, you won't know. Now it's even worse. They can pick all five. <laughs> you get what I mean? Right? So one way out is, one way out is, I said to print all five, tell you the summary of all five, then write. But that would mean more work. If you have only 10 students, we'll be fine. If you have 40 students, 100 students. That's the dilemma that we had when we were teaching you know, academic English for, for my faculty. Before this, 
student actually need to print out all the references and print the references to the class. And then the lecturer has to go and filter and approve everything before they can produce. Last time the class was only 20 to 30. Now each class is about 40 to 50. One lecturer or one language teacher has to teach nine classes. Nine times four, that will be one of, uh, sorry, 360 students. Who on earth has the time to check one by one, right? I mean, I'm, asking, I'm telling you this because of the, the, the way the assessment was designed yeah. doesn't allow you to, to check. Because for cost checking to be, uh, to be happening, then you have to do more work, right? Again, perception and trust again. And last one is bias and authenticity. Same issue with this one. Uh. But I think the, the key one is the first one. It's always the first one. Copyright and intellectual property. For text, for chat GPT, uh, so far, I think you can still be safe, like, because it's 80 to 90% um, unique, you will never get the same thing twice. Even if there's one word different, you normally will not get the exact same thing. So, so you are safe in that way. Uh, another one is images as well, from mid-journey. You will also will not get the same thing twice. There will be some minor differences in here, here and there. You will never get the exact copy. That's the problem with generative AI. Because every time you click submit or prompt, it will regenerate. It will try to generate from different uh, uh, parts. And then you will just, you know, fix it and then. Now the issue is, if 10 students did the same thing, and keep on uploading, uploading, uploading to somewhere, and then the, the database start to, start to compile all this AI generated content, sooner or later, all this AI generated content will be flooding the internet. And everyone will be the same. And then the similarity will be even higher. So how do you be creative in this kind of world? You get what I mean? Because everyone is sending the AI generated content up and back and up and up and back. So the whole content on the net now will be all, all mostly AI generated. So when you publish yours, it will be similarity will be high. So how do you be creative in this world? Everyone say, oh, you are copying mine, you are copying mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's getting great. Yeah. Huh? That's why a lot of people actually publish books from changing this content without feeling the guilt. Because they know that nobody can sue them. Yeah. Because you can't sue them. Yeah? Oops, sorry. But anyhow, let's talk about assessment a bit. And then something for you to do. Uh, so something for you to think about is... I think the problem with assessment is, even if you don't like the writing part, you somehow have to, have to include it because of the LO. Somewhere along the line, the way you crafted your learning outcome has that part where they need to write something or they need to produce a report. Maybe one of them. So until you change that, you still have to assess them that bit, right? Or that skill. So like for our case, academic writing definitely has to have the writing component. You cannot take out the writing part. Even if you want them to speak, you cannot be more than certain percentage because the course is about writing, right? So. Something like that. Lah. So you have to align. Then it has to be authentic. I think one thing is the authenticity um, is when a lot of lecturers, even us, when we try to make our assessment more authentic, we try to relate to local context. I think that will be one way to beat the system a bit. Like I said, even GPT-4 is still weak in this. When you ask it to relate to Sarawak context or even specific context like Kota Samarang, it won't be able to do it. It will give you very generic description and then, you know, it will start to churn out some nonsense stuff about there's so many e-bans in Kota Samarang, how do you know? Right? I mean, all these, are, all these are wrong, wrong information. So that's one way to beat the system a bit by changing your assessment to be more localized. But again, again, you know, sooner or later this will be beaten, but not that soon, I think, because, uh, because of that uh, limitation. And achievable, of course, the assessment has to be achievable. Sometimes we want to ask them to do more because we know that writing will be too easy for them because of the generative AI and then, but then again, you know that this is year one, semester one, you won't expect them to hold uh, <laughs> something, you know, something big and all that. Then, okay, just, I, just write an essay for me, for example. So maybe you will go along that line. But it has to be adaptive and AI proof. I think the key here is AI proof in a way. Try your best. Don't re don't, uh, don't rely on one um, one form of evidence. Even if it's writing, like like was mentioned just now, you have to figure out one way to include other elements where you can also evaluate the student apart from just the written word. So. 
Yeah, these are some suggestions. Uh, first one is effective domain. This is where the writing part will be more personalized. It's not about giving me facts. So I, that's what I notice in assessment these days. If you notice, you don't really need to ask them to tell you the facts anymore, right? What's the point? Like, tell me three facts about it. Why? Because you can search it. You might as well teach them to be more critical. Okay, now that you know this fact, how do you relate to your family? Even if you actually, if you teach everything, you can only fake it until a certain level, but you cannot fake everything, right? Because it starts to, start to sound so weird. Yeah. Right? Because it's so westernized kind of thing. So I think that will be the key now. But of course, you can't do this for everything. Yeah. But whenever you have the opportunity to tweak your uh, writing topic or whatever, you might want to relate more to the personal stuff. This one, even though uh, ChatGPT can do it, the, the personal, personalization can be uh, easily detected because student knows it's fake. Because it's not that. If it's fake, they can fake. Because they don't care, right? Okay, you ask them to find three articles about this and write a summary. They don't really care about what's happening in the summary, uh, the, the articles, right? But if you start to ask them to read to their family, if they know that what they are written is wrong, they will feel something wrong with that thing, right? It's like all this, uh, I think there was one viral stuff where they asked the parent to sit together, they fake the interview, remember? Did you, did you see all the trend? They, they tell, the they wake up in the morning, they all that, fake it, and then the parents start to make all the faces, uh, that kind of, that kind of, because they know it's wrong, right? Because it's personal. If it's factual, normally it will be, it will be, uh, it will be, I mean, they don't care, and it will be the same. And the one thing is, maybe you have to figure out a different way of measuring the, the factual part. And I personally love speaking. All the factual stuff that you want them to critique or ever go for speaking. Anything personal, go for writing. Then save your hassle a bit. Because facts are facts. When they talk about it, it will be more powerful and more, not to say more powerful, actually you're teaching them to be more persuasive as well. In the working world, people don't care what, how much you write about the fact, they want you to see you talk. Right? That's one thing. But personal stuff, yeah, you can write. Right? I mean, this is just a personal opinion. Another one is promote a collaboration, but in Malaysia, this one... 50-50, mm, <laughs> because sometimes groups are not groups, or some collaborative work are not really collaborative. But it, it's one way to avoid it is like, oh, where you have projects, like, I know project-based learning, where uh, you don't rely only on the singular output of a written report, you rely on everyone producing something like, uh, like drama and theater will be easier. Produce a theater. You can't ask ChatGPT to do the stuff for you. Maybe the ChatGPT part will be the script part, give you some idea, but they, they can't just do it just by copying yeah. the content. They still have to figure out, okay, this character needs some changes. So at least they put effort in, in changing it, right? Um, hot strategies, again, now hot is always mis, um, misinterpreted as in it has to be like high level critical thinking. Uh, if it's Bloom taxonomy, it will be the uh, creating part. Not really, but just up one level will be fine as in, instead of asking them to just find out something about the, the topics or whatever, ask them to look it from a different perspective. Even though ChatGPT can do that, now, um, how to put it? The thing is, if everyone is in ChatGPT asking for the same perspective, you will notice the similarity of the, the view because ChatGPT's database may not be that extensive for that particular perspective. So, my advice to you is, before you give it to the student, you test it on ChatGPT first. You get what I mean? Whatever you have in mind, the rubric or the idea, put it in ChatGPT, see what is the output first. If ChatGPT can give you quite nice output, and the more you ask, if you keep on pressing regenerate, you grow what you want. That means the topic is well, well, um, you know, well captured by, by the database. So you might not want to ask them. Scope. Maybe change it a bit, a tweak. Once you tweak and then you notice, ah, this is wrong, that means that's a good topic, <laughs> because ChatGPT got it wrong. That's the tricky part, right? You ask ChatGPT, when ChatGPT gives you wrong answer, that is the topic that you need to give you to the students. Because if they copy and paste it, you will know they copy and paste it from ChatGPT, because they did it wrong. Yeah. You get me? Now, if you ask ChatGPT and ChatGPT can give you an extensive answer, then don't use the topic. Don't use the rubrics or don't use that as a success. That's the, that's the tip for you. Right? So, and also real evidences, as much as you can, even though you don't check, in my case, even though I don't really check, I will force students, whatever references you put, please send it in the PDF, upload it in the graph, and send it to me, as if I will check, but at least, at least they will filter it first, because they know, they have to send the uh, references, you get know what I mean? 
So that's another strategy where focus on real evidences instead of whatever they put on paper. Okay? They claim that they get it from the article. Okay, send me the article. You just have to do this one or twice, then student will capture. Okay, I have to be careful. I don't just simply copy and paste because I need to provide the, the PDF of that, whatever I claim that is from the reference. Right? Before this, I, when I have a time, I, even worse, you know, that paragraph, if you put citation there, I will ask the student where in that reference that you cited from, you have to highlight. Mm -hmm. If I notice one wrong, you have to justify why is it different. There's, the person never said that. I mean, that time, those days when you have the time now, you know. All right? Now you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the, <laughs> to the students. But I think when, when, when I did, the students learned, because they know it's wrong, then they learn how to do it better. The other one is be biased with action. This one is something to beat ChatGPT, where action, I think we talked about it just now. More to action, instead of just written work, you can ask them to, to you know, to, 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 to present, to, to talk, to role play, whatever. Do bias towards action. Right? Extra tips, yeah, rubrics. Okay, rubrics, do more than just scoring. I think rubrics that we normally give to our students focus a lot on scoring. Right? Then the student will focus on the score. They will ask you, that person that I can't even answer, why did I, why did I get five? They didn't focus on that, uh, the task, they only focus on the end, the, the mark that they get, right? So what you can do is, probably for your rubric, whatever you want to do, you can ask the need to help you on this. Uh, describe each element of the rubric uh, with systematic steps, like you want them to do. If they do all, five marks up. You don't get five because you didn't do one of it. For example, that helps to do as well. At least they know, okay, I didn't get five because I missed this one. That's one way. Meaning your rubrics will be slightly, slightly more extensive. But now you don't have to print, right? You can just give them in the PDF version. If they, if they read, those who didn't read the rubrics of course will lose out, but those who did will actually get good marks because of your steps. So the rubrics has to be more than just a general descriptors. Like for example, the typical uh, rubrics for presentation would be fluency. So we just look for fluency. How do students know what is fluency? One out of ten, right? One is how? Like ten is no error at all, or you know, are you going to allow some pronunciation error or one not? Or one means you don't talk at all? They need to know, right? So you can ask ChatGPT, give them the, uh, give you the, uh, the clear uh, rubrics just in case for those. Some of you maybe are looking at me, what, what do you mean, ask ChatGPT? <laughs> Reviews, the detail, degrees for a presentation. Then you don't have to be, by the way, when you give prompt to ChatGPT, you don't have to be perfect in your grammar. I just, whatever comes in your mind, you just start. 20% in total, 5% uh, for fluency, 5% for language, 5% for what I own, whatever, 5% for contact. I contact. Give uh, clear steps in a scale. Okay, I'm just random. Let's see what it, what it gives you first. And it will give you a table of like. Uh, okay, oh, I forgot to put in a table form. Later, I just. So this is what is like what I mean. Like we normally don't tell them one point is one, but we just give them one to five, right? So now you can you can one is and if you're not happy you can say give me more and then we will give you more if you want. But I don't like this because it's not in the table form. So what you can do is can you download the extension for <laughs> the, the extension for ChatGPT is free, the group, but it has to be on Google Chrome. Oh. Now, I, I want it in table form, you can see now it's in table form. <laughs> I think if you join the session by Dr. Samsul, as well as by Kang, he will explain more on this. Of course, you have to go through. Yeah? You cannot trust everything. Sometimes it's wrong. So, so let's say, let's say you, you see this, you saw this. Then, if you don't like that one, for example, I don't like the description for 
turn safe? Can you work with to make it easier for my students to understand? Oh yeah, by the way, when I give prompt to JPT, I love to do like a conversation yeah. stuff. <laughs> so I, 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 I did, I see changes already. It's different from, you see, speaker frequently has stay and stumble, so this one, speaker struggles to speak smoothly and pause often, making it hard to follow. Oh, okay, clear, though. I will use this one. Okay. And ChatGPT is always so positive, you will say, feel free to register further, the bell is still your student. <laughs> It's like motivating you, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you don't feel like teaching the course, you will feel okay after teaching this course. <laughs> I test out this, right? Right, a one-page essay on the academic condition. 
Yeah. You will notice the moment you read the first paragraph, you know this is not right. Because it will, it will do some uh, rubbish um, general statement, like, you know, has I just speak in the of my ears? Once a predominantly agricultural town, this is very true, right? I mean, as you go into education, this one is taken from some sources up, up, up there, right? Then, once you read further, you will notice that it doesn't make sense. Right, doesn't make sense, then you know that it's wrong. Then the, 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 the thing is, chat GPT also always do this. Some students just copy paste the whole thing without removing that. So it's always like copy and paste right? Yeah, but the trick is like this. Just give another prop, right? Damn it. Language. Yeah. 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 But this one, of course, I didn't, is, I didn't use any plugin. If I enable the uh, scholarly plugin, then it will get all the journal. These are all, I don't know where they get it from, most likely websites. Mm. But it seems fake. It seems fake to me. Yeah. Right? How do you know? You see here? It's fake. Oh. Uh, you can see here, actual references need to be used. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> but students who are learning how to write, they will know that, okay, this part I need to be a citation, I just have to go online, find one citation, huh, put it there. You know what I mean? Just change it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if they are learning, if they are not learning, they will be copy and pasting everything, send it to you, including this one, link to the source. Without any changes, then you will know these students are weak, these students are good. In fact, this kind of tools, right, it makes the gap wider. A lot of people say it's closing the gap between the good one and the weaker one. Actually, it's widening up. Because the good one will continue to be augmented in terms of the intelligence. The weaker one will just do the palm flying copy and paste without learning anything. So there's a... So the, the weaker one needs to be taught how to maximize on this. Or else the gap will be even... Don't imagine the intelligent one knowing this. They are not, they are not dumb. They know, they know how to write. But they're going to use this to save a lot of time and do more, right? Maybe all this while, you only need five references now with this, they can give you ten references, high quality ones. Then suddenly you have to give an A to this or those, those things, right? Compared to before, maybe you would give a B. The same so they will probably give a B, but now the student knows how to use GPT, you have to give an A because of the ability. But those who are getting C or D will continue to get C or D because of the... Yeah, or F because of... In fact, worse is F because copy and paste thing, right? So, yeah. What's more of your concern? Students who just rely on this 100% and all the smart students who don't actually learn 100% they just learn to use this tool. I'll be more concerned with the copy and pasting part. So if I notice this kind of trend, if I personally, I would help those copy and pasting part. The good one for me, even if they go out later, after they graduate, you don't have to really right. worry about that, they'll be okay. You so help those who are... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you can be scratching your head. What are they doing in the universities when, you know, with tools like this, they are not doing, doing you know, yeah. justice for themselves. Those with good ones, let them be. If they want to cheat, it's up to them to answer to the consequences they tell us. If we caught them, then we deal with them uh, separately. But the one that we should be focusing on are the weaker ones with all these tools, they still are unable to, to produce a good work, right? <laughs> yeah, after all, this, uh, I think, was it George Bernard Shaw who said yeah. originality is uh, undetected plagiarism? <laughs> yeah, if it's undetected, then you're original, even though maybe you need to copy from someone. Okay, these are some tools. Okay, about well, copy, it's just nice. Thank you. Uh, for text, these are the two pop uh, popular ones. I think you have used CPT0 and uh, 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 copy links are, in fact, copy links is the best one now in town. Unfortunately, it's not free. Yeah, because it used to be. No, no, it's not about it, it, it's, it's, You have to subscribe, then you, then only you can use. Last time they allow you to use the free one, you know, forever. As long as you want now, they limit. Right? 
uh, GPT-0, I think they still allow to pay one, but you have to register my account with limitation. This one is very accurate. I, so far, I don't think this is... So far, I don't think this is the best. But the thing is, it seems to be... Uh, it seems so hard to beat the system now. Before this, when you generate content from ChatGPT, like what you mentioned, you translate and then you back translation, blah blah blah. You put it in, you probably can escape. This one somehow can still know it, right? Let's say if I take this one, huh? okay. Let's try. Uh, detector. The, the free one, I think, should be... Where is it? Huh? Oh, this one, you have to pay for that. Don't tell me I have to register. Okay, please. Uh, so, it's hard. In fact, I've written, uh, uh, like the copy list, right? I've written spontaneous on my own, but I still need the SPI generator. Because of the AI. Oh, yeah. I, know, I mean, the way they detect it. And, and the thing is, the larger the language model, it will start to include all this personalized way of writing. Like I said just now, imagine if you are allowed to upload your style of writing, it will be stored somewhere. Right? And the more, the more it learns about you, the more human it is, then it's very hard to differentiate. Like this one is like a scan. Oh, in fact, this is the not. Oh, by the way, when you want to scan, you need to upload a clean text. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. When you copy and paste from ChatGPT, it actually has a marker behind the HTML coding telling people that you download, you copied from ChatGPT. So you have to clean it first. Uh, use Notepad or Notes. Go to Notepad or you can go online to clean it. Go to. Clean it first, clean it first, then you go and detect. Now you ask me to sign up. Uh, I want to sign up again. Uh, I have Google on me. Yesterday, yesterday, I think I did. Never mind. Okay, that means you, you, when you copy directly from a chat like this, right? You are actually copying code, and the code actually will say, if you read the code, it will say copy from chat Obviously, I don't have to do that. It clear it. No, no, if you clean it, you copy, nobody will know from where. Nobody will know from where. It's like image. It's like photo, when you take a photo, you transfer directly using uh, AirDrop or whatever, transfer directly, the other person will know the metadata of the image. If you upload through WhatsApp, the, all the metadata will be clean. So they will not know where you took the photo from and all that. Uh, so this one, because you copy from the website, <laughs> the, the code will be saved from JTBT. Obviously, the detector will save from JTBT. Right? So you have to clear, or, or you can go online, you can just say, uh, clear text. Uh, like, text cleaner, it's the famous one. I know it's text cleaner. Because whatever you copy from website, you see, sometimes if you notice, some people when they submit thesis, or when students submit their FIP, you will see some text copied somewhere. Because they copy from the source. What I normally do, I will copy the text, I put it in the HTML, I can actually see where they get it from, you know, even wow. it online. Because they copy the whole formatting, which is, which is very dangerous. So instead of money laundering, this is word laundering. <laughs> true, true. Brains. <laughs> Brains. Laundry. You are cleaning the, uh, you are cleaning uh, the words, the text. But but this one is not for the students. This one is for the detector because if you if you upload something which is already mentioned from ChatGPT, the code at this stage, then no point for you to upload it there because it will say it's okay. Yeah, so you have to clean it first. 
Okay, let me try again. Again? Okay, Visigo score. Visigo score? Hmm, good question. I never thought of that. You can try. Can we try? one. Yeah, you can try. But I think if it's a popular popular one, probably you will you will probably detect. But Chen Yuni has never produced any Visigo score yet. It's just worthy. It's just worthy. Any major sound. Why do I pay? <laughs> what happened? I just know it's... Hmm. Anyhow, I think I think because they did that, I count. It's supposed to be free from the front. Never mind, we try this one. GPT-0, okay, GPT-0. Huh? This is the popular one. Ah, yeah, you can do like this, okay? Now, now, you, you, now you can even select the suspicious uh, sources like Chen Yudi, GPT-4, Bar, Human or Human AI. But you can just check our origin. Forty-eight. See, this is quite bad. Because I actually copied everything from... AI. I actually copied everything from that. But the AI detector says... Yeah, clean it. Yeah, because I clean it just now. But then again, still, uh, by right, it should be 100%. Or maybe higher than that, but this is only 48. Maybe because of the... Uh, you can try. Yeah, I have one, one in my folder. <coughs> Okay, this is sample tag I randomly typed last time. I think it should not be detected, but then sometimes. Do not detect the one. Face? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's mine. Correct. Right. I vote for which one? Okay, check regime. Ah, okay, that was sent by AI. You wrote it yourself. Yeah, I randomly wrote. In fact, I even purposely use all these personal pronouns. Now, let's say, uh, let's say if I copy this, if I go to ChatGPT and then I say, can you make this undetected by AI scanner? Let's try. Go check, go check. So it will paraphrase how? Yeah. I cannot assist with the request. <laughs> ah, okay. You see, what is it? Uh, there's another slide. Undetected. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I can humanize Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you will see a lot of personal pronouns. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Undetected AI, right? Undetectable AI. This one. Oh my god. But still, other, other downside, but you can try. See, more human, eh? Humanize. Humanize. Eh? Oh, look at that. Just Access block. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, website. Yeah, it's going to be here. I think I, I, I know. Just, just change this. Mila, you use this one, it's too obvious. You want to ask. Ah. <laughs> okay. Kita guna ayat tadi lah. But still, I, I, I can I can say that it's not really a good good a good way to to change because the moment you change right, it changes the meaning as well. You will see a lot of all this uh, you know, much uh, like informal language. Okay, yeah, yeah, true. I I dah masuk, dah masuk. So let's, let's try detect again. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, because I, I didn't clean it just now. Sorry. Yeah, still, but lower now, right? Okay. But again, when, when, I, when, I, when I say uh, like 48 AI generated, it doesn't mean that you copy and paste it. It means that some parts could be AI generated. Same like the similarity index, right? Now, 38 has the same feature. If you activate in your elite data, yeah. when the students submit, for example, you will have this. Uh, this one, AI writing. They will give you the similarity index up there, right? There's a button down there say AI writing, just click it, then you will get the website. You get the, the, thing. the problem is, when it's AI writing, the weird thing is, Colleen will tell you they suspect that part because it's taken from some sources. So it's actually similar to similarity index because similarity index is also detecting that you have similar uh, sentences or wording taken from somewhere. Right? So that's why people are questioning Kalini because the AI writing part is not really accurate. Because it's just checking the similarity index but putting it in a different way saying that they have a, this AI detection feature. But not as good. But at least when you have it in the system, you tell students that you will be detected, then they are more alert. They will put more effort to to change the, the writing a bit and not point blank copy. Right? But again, it will be very hard. Trust me. <laughs> the moment so then I start to do like the humanize everything, you know, it's very really hard to detect. Right? Very hard to detect. Yeah. Okay. I think. Okay, yeah, the image one, I forgot. I think you know, this one you go back and try because as far as I know, Copilics, the free one allow you to do the free one just like uh, GPT Hero. I think maybe because of the browser setting, maybe somehow keep asking me to register. For images, I think images without tools you should be able to identify but just by looking at the images. But sometimes so nice that you don't know what went wrong with the image, then you can use these two tools. The easier one is AI or not. The other one is Illuminati. R R T dot AI. Let's try AI or not. AI or not. Some images are quite obvious, like just how the the sour party one quite easy. This one is quite easy to detect. You know why? Can you see the the error? Yeah. Yeah. Doggy, stable division, mid journey, all have problem with hands. Mm. See here. Mm. One way to detect is always hands. Mm. Hands are very easy to detect. Somehow they are okay with legs now, but uh, the hands. Really? But if you see the background alone, it's, it looks okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say this image. Because it's landscape, it's quite hard to detect whether it's mm -hmm. AI generated or not, right? Oh, no, yeah, but I think some of you, you are the art expert, you should easily detect. So let's say I just upload this one. See? Or not. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> this is generated by Meet Journey. So maybe let's try. Let's. It's always good to try non non AI one. Yeah. Actually, image right when you download the metadata has the sources where it was generated as well. So this this so called website rely on that kind of metadata to know. So if you clear the metadata sometimes they also got confused because it was too similar, right? You know right, metadata, yeah, the, the, the camera, they will tell you uh, using what camera. <coughs> let's try something, let's, say, let's try something, something real. Let's take some minimas for more. Okay, let's see. Save this. This is definitely not AI generated. 
But let's see whether. But I think you will you will know anyway. It's not AI because of the. I think images. I'm not that surprised because every image you have the metadata embedded with the image. So the metadata will tell you where it was done. If it's mid journey or stable diffusion, whatever, it will tell you it's from there. Image is quite easy to know. Text is hard because once you clean it, like like what I did just now, it's very hard to detect. Right? Even if you put it, turn it in, then it will tell you how many percent. It's up to you to decide whether you. I think I think the rule is like this: once you reach a certain threshold or the the line that you set, tell student you exceeded the line. I mean, you crossed the line. I want you to redo, so they know that they have crossed the line. Like. Suddenly, 70, 75 percent AI. Then obviously, you have to redo, right? You, you, won't, we won't be allowing that to, to just, just get away from, from, from that. Unless they admit that, they said, okay, I actually did everything using ChatGPT because I, 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 I don't have time. You know, I was too busy doing something else. Blah blah blah. Then you have to decide how are you going to assess this student? I mean, or you want to penalize students? Okay. Yeah, I think images, video are you quite okay because images and everything you have that coding and involved, so it's quite easy to detect. Text is always the hardest. Text is always the hardest. So you can try Illuminati as well. Okay, same, same AI engine. This is the turning in. Those of you who have never used you, you probably need to activate. So you go to edit, go to activities, just find turning in assignment, just add it in, and then uh, make the report available to students. Don't hide the report because if you hide, only you can see it. No point because they don't know what went wrong. At least they know, then they can fix it. Right? Yeah, AI policy is something you ask whether we have, we don't have yet until now. Um, for KPT level, they are drafting. Until now, no news. But Unimas level also no news yet. Probably they will be. Just a, I think for universities, normally what they will do is you follow the ministry's uh, provision. So they would just say, whatever concerning AI, please refer to you know, very smart one from KPT. But this is a sample that you can have your own policy for your class. This is by Associate Professor Dr. Ethan. He has his own policy in the rubrics. So before, before he gave the uh, assessment, he will explain that it's something like, I expect you to use AI, chat GPT and image generation tools at a minimum in this class. In fact, some assignments will require it. Learning to use AI is an emerging skill and I provide tutorials in Canvas. This is Canvas in the LMS tool. Huh? I'm happy to meet and help blah blah blah. So this is helping those people who never use AI before. So I think this is a nice way of telling students that, look, I know you want to use it. If you don't know how to use it, I will teach you how to use it correctly rather than just point blank copy and paste it. So be aware of the limits. If you provide minimum effort from, you will get low quality result. Like I told you, if you just simply do it, they will get simply uh, you you know very low quality result. Don't trust anything it says, right? If it gives you a number of facts, assume it's wrong unless you either know the answer or can check it with another sort. I think this is a quite a benefit, a beneficial uh, how to put it, a guideline for student. Assume everything is wrong until you prove that it's right. Given by ChatGPT, AI is a tool, but one that you need to acknowledge using. Now, this one, I think, this is also very useful. Ask students to identify which paragraph did they use, um, you know, AI to help and all that. Uh, last one, be thoughtful about web is to use so blah blah blah. Don't use if it's in the, isn't appropriate. Means don't use when you don't need it, right? I also have a simpler version, but this is for university wide. In fact, this was the first draft that I did. For, for a general guideline, but it's like a question, but you can go to the link later, I'll give you the slide, but basically it's a simpler form. So if you're allowing it to happen, it's it's always good to, it's always good to tell to the point, you know, like from the beginning of the course, or like next week is the start of the semester, just tell them, okay, I know you're going to use this, but if you want to use it, please follow this guideline, right? Responsible usage, is AI needed for this task? Think about it, check, checking its accuracy, keeping it honest, don't use AI to cheat. You know, it's, uh, uh, just tell them that we know that you're going to use AI to learn, but don't copy and paste. I mean, that's the basic, basic thing. 
and then give credit where it's due. Just tell them, just tell them to sign. Even if you use ChatGPT, now you have you have APA style for ChatGPT by the way. There's an APA citation for ChatGPT content, so they can actually cite that they get it from ChatGPT. Wow. But don't don't everything ChatGPT. ChatGPT sounds so weird. Yeah. Uh, I think ChatGPT citation is also for I think it's this one. Yeah, so I saw FPA shared it on the FPA website. But what do you say? Open AI. But then you see here, this is a good practice. They have to append their full transcript of where they get it from. So at least you can compare where did they change. You know, did they actually make any modification and all that? Then you put in your reference this. So this is teaching student. Okay, fine. You want to use it, fine. But then use it properly. Tell, tell me where you use it from. Okay, so just be honest. So you can, you can, you can, you can teach students that they, they. But again, obviously, if they use it too, too often, it's also bad. So tell them don't use it all the time. Um, I think and bias, keep learning, and all that. I think this is key. This one. The, the problem with all these tools is not, not just ChatGPT, any tool. Students just know that little bit, and then they keep repeating the mistake, and then you get frustrated because they keep giving you the low quality one. Right? If they put effort to give you high quality one, maybe you okay, yeah. we'll give you, we'll give you, yeah. But now they keep giving you the copy and paste stuff. But anyhow, uh, that's the sample. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. The link to the site is this one. Beat the L1. I forgot to use. I forgot to do QR code. <laughs> AI F A C A. I think I think um, like I like I mentioned earlier, it's very hard to decide by yeah, like a blanket decision. You have to judge according to your task. Um, if you want to go by the rule, then we just stick to the uh, plagiarism rule of not more than thirty percent or thirty five percent. I think that's the cap. If you want to go by the the rule book that we have at the moment, uh, because that copy from uh, AI generated content will be plagiarism as well. But, but, if they are just using it, and then they did modification, they get inspiration, that one I think you can't limit it to 30 or 25, because it's very hard for you to detect anyway. What I mean here is, the moment they use the content, and they, you fit it into 38, for example, and 38 says 70, that is definitely wrong. Right? If 38 says 30, 30%, 35, okay. Right? Meaning, they still have to give some effort to change. But whatever they do, at the back end, they use all 100%, you can't control that. As long as they know how to, you know, uh, modify it so that the similarity drops. That would be, that, to me that would be fine. Right? Because it's very hard to control. And uh, of course assessment is always the multi, multi-skill assessment, that would be nice. Don't assess only based on writing or report. Assess other, other, other skills as well so that you know, oh, okay, uh, you know. Yeah, those are not from you, those are from uh, some, some other sources. I think, I think the future would be, this is my own, my own uh, like speculation in terms of the way we assess students. In the future, there will be lesser and lesser written work. Because they don't need to write anymore anyway. Might as well focus on more important skills that we need to bring, brush them, right? Like skill, like in your, your case will be practical skill. Huh? Now, that brush will not you know, like they can't even hold the paintbrush. What? Why are you expecting them to come up with pages and pages of essay? Right? So focus on the core skills. Then when they go out, at least even if they don't know how to write, they know how to use ChatGPT to help them overcome the, the the problem. 
But if they don't know how to hold a brush forever, it's going to be hard for them to, yeah. to learn, them, for example. Because, yeah. I just want to share the experience with the LI students. Yeah. <coughs> My son was doing an LI, one uh, of the creative industries uh, uh, studios. Uh, and there's two students that there. My son said the other students. Uh, they were giving the same task. For example, like the boss was asking them to do a script, write a five script about Independence Day. So, uh, two students at the same time. So my son came up with four scripts in half an hour. Like it was okay. it, because he's using the AI, uh, giving to the boss. And the boss didn't know. And he was so impressed with that. And then asked him to do a uh, storyboard. And he came up with 50 minutes, he came up with a storyboard. Yeah. And the boss said, can you do any methods? And he do any method storyboard with like half an hour. Yeah. And the boss said, the task that he got, he did it. He did it. Yep. It took people, four, four people in the same office, yep. two weeks to do it. And he can do it in one, one half an hour. Yeah. So with the, the, the boss, boss will be happy. Yeah, it's being so little for him. Asking, asking him how to do it. And he said all this was generated by AI. And then the students who start doing it in AI, he don't even know about AI. It was like left behind and doing yep. it like this. And the boss exactly. was so impressed with, with that. Exactly. And then he said, if we stop our students from exploring this, and this is why I put to the students outside there because yeah. lastly they want people who are really fast, creative, and it doesn't matter how you are put That's the problem. As long as you produce some things for them to present to the client. Correct. So, that is that is the reality. In fact, that's a, when when it, when AI like uh, you know ChatGPT came out, it's actually a reality check for university degrees actually. Because in order for you to produce all this content using ChatGPT, you don't need a degree. Yes. Right. Basically, it's questioning us. <laughs> in fact, it's questioning our own program. Why do they need to come to university if they can master the skill of generating all this content using ChatGPT? And then, like you said, the boss are happy with it, and then the whole industry is championing and promoting all these tools. So, what's the point of coming to UST anymore, right? After, after I know we use the, a lot of AI generators, I asked him, did he use all assignments to this? And I said, most of it use it, you know what you got on every semester this list, and finally, it's like 3.8. Yeah. So, it's nothing with this. Because yeah. students are using it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's why, I mean, it, it, it goes back to the question I said. AI is always like that. There, there are always this dilemma whether if you allow, this is what is going to happen. If you don't allow, this is going to what's going to happen. So, so, yeah, it's very hard to, to, to say no to it. But at the same time, we are putting ourselves at risk. That's the, that's the hard part. <laughs> So actually, I, I, I kept saying, the more we promote ChatGPT, the more, or uh, not just ChatGPT, like any tools, uh, the more we promote generative AI, the more we are putting our position as a lecturer or as an educator at risk. Because they don't need us. <laughs> and before this, we are the provider of knowledge. We can tell them, okay, all this. But now they don't need us. They can just search and then they can get all this. The only time they need us is just to do what I said as certification and verification. Our job is just a verifier, to be honest. But I kept getting to the workshop and I said, actually our job is just to verify. Yeah. So, but they don't learn from that. From they learn it from ChatGPT or they learn it from the website. Our job is to verify, okay, what you did is correct. That's it. You are qualified to graduate. So soon, I think, if, if this, I mean, in Malaysia, maybe not so fast, uh, but, uh, you know, people have been talking about this. Why are people, uh, why, why universities are okay to increase the fee? Because they know, no matter how you learn out there, you will not get the certification without paying. So no harm if you want certification, pay. So they don't, they don't mind if, if they increase the fee. Because the job of university now is just to verify the whole that you have. Right. Right. Certificate. So, really, really tricky question. Right. So like me, like me, I want to mention our. Well. <laughs> but it's true, it's true. If, if you really go on to that part of uh, like going through semesters, passing exam, graduate, memang tak akan pas hati. You will never be uh, satisfied with this job. The only thing is just seeing the student learning certain skills that are not given by ChatGPT or not taught by ChatGPT, the one that comes from you, you will feel very. You know, you're proud that this student actually learned this from you, not from any other ChatGPT or whatever. But if this student can get a deal list, an A, without even asking you anything, 
you know what I mean? Right? So, are you going to be saying that? Oh, I'm so proud with this student. Right? Or you have the weaker one who knows nothing about you. You help, and then the student managed to do some good jobs. Get a second job, that will be happier for you. If you help the student who knows nothing, and then learn something, right? So, it's really hard to, to really say no to AI. That is good. Yeah, but, but because the outside world now, they don't like what was mentioned by Bree, they don't care how you do it. They just want the output. And they want it fast. Worse is, they want it cheap. Why are they asking the intern to do everything and they, the one that they hired, like they pay 10,000, they don't, they are okay not asking them to do because it's cheap. <laughs> Now they say, oh, you, you don't have to learn, you can use ChatGPT. We're going to pay you 800 a day. Because <laughs> this one is also disrupting the market. Then, like before mid journey, graphic designer can charge very, very high. Now with mid journey, even the, the, the company, the big company, I, I had one uh, student, he from your faculty, uh, get a project from Petronas. He, he was submitting this quotation. I think it was a very very minimal 3,000 quotation only for a logo and all this uh, typesetting, blah blah blah, typography. The company said it's too expensive, can you do it in 300? Because you have checked, you have all these AI tools and everything, can you do it in 300? This is a big company, you know, not even a small company. So she was like, ah. then, not just this one, Canva lagi. Can, they have this concept, Canva can do everything for you. <laughs> So basically it's disrupting the, disrupting the, the market as well. Like, like script writing, right? Last time you can pay high, now you can pay high. And for FYP now. Okay, any other question? So how, for FYP? No more written FYP, yay! You need to mark. Yeah. Hey, Infection Ministry uh, started no more, no more disease, you know that? Oh. Or PhD, just publish in journal only. Because journal you get reviewed, you get to be reviewed, right? Where is this? 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 Okay, a lot of them already processed on that. This, it's not that the end product. Yeah. We here, we concern on what, how do you get yeah. the end product. Yeah. But it's not the end product, it's the process of how you get even, the end product. Even here, if we care about end product, we don't really read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad part. <laughs> you want it big, but you don't read it. <laughs> Nobody reads it. <laughs> Anyhow, let's, let's, uh, let's sit here. There's some question for you to think. So if no further question, that's it. I'm going to end this session. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks to the faculty for now. Uh, I don't miss uh, the, the session with Dr. Samsung on the, uh, the 18th. Organized by Kao. I think it's webinar.